It begins with darkness, like everything else. 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 Mortimer, the artist, alone, drunk, miserable, tormented by his own means to create, unable to create, the studio, the dream, the studio, the dream. When does a dream die? Is it after it's realized unachievable? Or is it at the moment of conception, the conquering of a dream? To conquer that which sets us free. But he could not set it free. So he set out to inhabit it. To someone creative. Sober. Someone preferably male. A note. From a jilted lover. Instead of being known as an artist, Mortimer is granted the reputation of a heartbreaker. Although his take on the cliché term is a little different. A heartbreaker. Someone who drinks about each night to feel less alone and then caruses the streets for an even more instant relief. They wake up expecting everything to be the same, but instead, the absence of loneliness has left them feeling lonelier. Unable to create. Unable to love. Maybe you're just looking for love in all the wrong places. Maybe. Sophocles said, what is unsought will go undetected. But maybe, just maybe, the best art and love is worth waiting for. Enter less. Creative? Sober? Male. Mortimer showed him the room and accepted his IOU in hopes that the studio would serve its purpose. Because within us, the dream is trapped. To set it free would be to kill it. No longer offering a glimpse of escape, it no longer serves its purpose. Les, the light packer that he is, never believed in too much. A minimalist, some might say. Simply process-based in keeping things together. Together and empty. But like all great minimalists, his actions may be simple, but his thoughts are quite complex. For instance, today he took the back of a young man like a cutting board, each vital organ now a missing piece from his cornucopia palette, smeared across the thin sheen of a fleshy canvas. As difficult as it may be to pull off, he loves interactive art, art the viewer must complete. He desires to make the work that never ceases, the art piece that keeps giving and giving again. But soon enough, people forget. They all forget. And then you're just catering to the same audience. But that's when you know it's time to skip town. The next morning, Mortimer receives news of an ex-lover found dead, murdered. The jilted lover and couldn't shake the feeling that he had somehow caused it. Heartbreaker. He took the article, and along with the note, began what would soon become an obsessive map of a man's twisted psyche. But still, something was missing. Yet Mortimer could not rest with the inadvertent guilt that it was somehow his fault. He took advantage of his managerial privileges and entered the studio. Something he would never do had it not been for the suspicion of. And then there it lay, looking like what could be confused for a piece of minimalist art. Now Mortimer begins to feel love. He wonders, If it truly is him, then what does that say about his feelings for me? <laughs> One thing's for sure. If it is him, he puts the man in maniac. L'homme in homicidal. As if he had to be somewhere, Mortimer used his haste to be in closer proximity to this man, 
anything to be closer to this new prospect of true love, even if it involves personal hygiene. Love, when the most monotonous activities of the day become the most exciting. Of course, this may happen more often than not, living with a serial killer, that is. Month after month after month, lover after lover after lover, they pile up like the IOUs under the door. Is it his own doing? Or is it for me he has done this? By sleeping with them, have I become the literal little death? He must feel something for me. He's deleting my loneliness. But you need something, someone. Mortimer collected what evidence he could in hopes that someday it would bring less closer to him. And in a sense, it did. Despite his near-death collision, Mortimer was relieved to find out not everyone he touched turned into large foreboding newsprint. It was then that Les told him about his experience as a figure model, his first foray into the world of art. It wasn't the constant stares that bothered me so. It was the fact that they'd never catch me in motion. Try as they may, I will never be caught on paper. A magazine, a photo, a drawing. Ha! Painting, for Christ's sake, has nothing on my never-bending will to continue moving. Inertia! What is in motion will continue to do so until stopped. But as they tried to capture the essence of his premeditated desire to move, the end that leads to the beginning, things began to get a lot darker. Kiroskiro gets covered in tenebrism, shrouded in eternal darkness. Where do I put myself? Am I to be under the constant gaze and never the gazer? Why can't I be just one fleeting moment in time, and not a lingering image, seared and connected to the mastermind, created to be used over and over again, and then fade away? And then Les told him, My only fear is to die, and then be granted immortality. I'd rather die than lose the love I never had. And that's when he realized it. He goes on pretending that love will never happen. Because if it did... Les always had to beg, borrow, or steal to get his artwork. But he wasn't ready for Mortimer to offer his back to him like a knife block. Twelve different slots for the same knife. And that's when he realized it that instead of moving, expanding, he'd been doing the same thing over and over, just in different places. As Mortimer embraced his last gasp of air, his thoughts wandered back to the toothbrushes, wet, wet and, perky, and perky, touching, touching each, each other, other are the closest, are the closest I'd ever get, get to a kiss from you. But you are dead to me now, and forever immortalized in my heart.